2022 was a quiet year for uranium equities, registering a fall of around 6%. It was a year marked by volatility across almost all asset classes, but that didn't stop the price of uranium oxide from making its third consecutive year of gains. As we enter 2023, there have been several major recent developments for uranium markets. Japan has continued its about face on nuclear energy, introducing a new policy that aims to maximize the use of its nuclear fleet, potentially resulting in extensions to the lives of its existing reactors. In South Korea's 10th basic plan for long-term electricity supply and demand, it calls for nuclear to account for nearly 35% of electricity generation by 2036, which is up from 23.4% in 2018. The Swedish government is aiming to introduce a new law that would remove restrictions on the number of nuclear reactors, with the Prime Minister stating that there is an obvious need for more electricity production in Sweden. The Indian government has provided in-principle approval for five locations to build new nuclear power plants. Last year, the US Department of Energy National Nuclear Security Administration announced that it would create a one million pound Federal Strategic Uranium Reserve. More recently, contracts have begun being awarded for this reserve. The first trend to watch is uranium overfeeding. To understand this, first we need to learn a bit about the nuclear fuel process. Natural uranium is mined and milled, which produces uranium oxide or yellow cake. The uranium oxide is then sent to a conversion plant where it's turned into uranium hexafluoride or UF6. Finally, UF6 is purified or enriched into nuclear fuel, ready to be used in a nuclear power plant. In years past, there's been a trend of underfeeding at enrichment facilities. Essentially, a smaller amount of UF6 is fed into the enrichment centrifuges, which are then operated for a longer period, resulting in the same output for a smaller input. This has made sense due to an excess of enrichment capacity. However, some industry figures are now expecting a reversal in this trend. Due to a shortage of enrichment capacity, not only are facilities expected to stop underfeeding, but some may even begin overfeeding. This is when extra UF6 is fed into the enrichment centrifuges, which can then be run for a shorter period. This is a more efficient use of enrichment capacity, but requires additional UF6 and consequently uranium oxide, potentially resulting in increased demand. According to Brandon Munro, CEO of Bannerman Energy and member of the World Nuclear Association Advisory Panel, additional conversion capacity would be supportive for uranium oxide prices as additional UF6 supply could mean less underfeeding and possibly even overfeeding, which would then free up enrichment capacity. According to some estimates, a switch from underfeeding to overfeeding could create 20 to 30 million pounds of additional demand for uranium oxide, which is around 11 to 17% of the uranium oxide market. The second trend to watch is the move away from Russian supply. Russia accounted for around 5% of mined uranium oxide supply in 2021. However, its neighbor and ally Kazakhstan accounted for a massive 45%. Much of Kazakhstan's uranium is sent to Russia for conversion and enrichment, further complicating matters for Europe and the US. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has resulted in repeated calls for European and US governments, as well as corporates, to sever ties with Russia. If utilities are to reduce their dependence on Russian supply, additional investment in mines, conversion facilities, and enrichment facilities in allied countries would be required. The third trend to watch is decarbonisation. As the world increasingly looks to reduce its reliance on coal and gas, while simultaneously electrifying many of the processes that were previously fueled by oil, significant investment in electricity production will be needed if we're to meet our climate goals. A focus on energy security has seen renewed interest in nuclear energy, as evidenced by the number of governments that have changed their policies and plans in recent years. BetaShares Global Uranium ETF, ASX URNM, provides exposure to a portfolio of global companies involved in the mining, exploration and development of uranium, modern nuclear energy and companies that hold physical uranium 
or uranium royalties. URNM provides a cost-effective and easily accessible way to gain exposure to companies involved in the uranium industry. Nuclear energy undoubtedly faces challenges such as higher capital costs, a history of cost overruns, and a lack of widely agreed permanent waste solutions. However, given the appeal of carbon dioxide free, long lifespan, reliable power, and with new technologies such as small modular reactors, nuclear is expected to have a role in a decarbonized future.